Welcome, thank you for tuning in. Now, I just wanted to introduce you to my friend, Ben Porter. Uh, so, Ben and I connected on Instagram and he invited me down to where he lives, which is amazing. He pretty much lives in the heart of an Atlantic rainforest. We've literally walked from his doorstep to this area here, which is fantastic. Uh, but Ben's uh, an ecologist, conservationist, just all around nature enthusiast. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below so you can find Ben's work on Instagram because you also love photography. Is it predominantly wildlife photography? Mostly based on wildlife and birds in particular. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. So I'm yeah. hoping we kind of really both benefit from getting out and enjoying these spaces because one of the things which I've mentioned before is I think there's a huge amount of value in building our ecological knowledge as photographers because not only does it enrich the experience, um, but I think it really helps to understand exactly what you're photographing. So you're seeing more than just trees in the frame. So, and hopefully I can maybe offer something interesting to you from a Absolutely, photographic sure. perspective as well. Absolutely. So uh, the weather's a little bit against us. We've got a lot of sunshine, but I'm sure we'll still enjoy the experience and I can't wait to see your local stomping ground. Yeah, I look forward to showing you and seeing what we can manage. Yeah, right. let's, get, let's get cracking. I just love this, there's so much going on with a variety of trees, the water running through, a lushness of life here. Um, so I've not wandered around much, <laughs> but within the first couple of minutes I spotted this scene here, which I think photographically offers something interesting. So from your ecological mind, what do you see when you're looking at a scene like this? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, so I mean, at the moment, as part of my job, I'm actually doing quite a lot of woodland assessments to understand what condition they're in. Okay. And in this particular area, we are in a rainforest, um, which is dominated by oak and birch. And so it's quite under important to understand, you know, what their health is like. Um, and that's all the way from the canopy layer right down to the forest floor and looking at all those different layers. And in this particular sort of scene that we can see here it's really cool because we've got this um, beautiful crab apple tree right. which um, is a really interesting species that I don't think a lot of people would probably know or like associate with being in these sort of environments but you often get quite um, sort of genetically pure species of crab apple in okay. these environments and this is this might well be a hundred percent and not being diluted by you know pollen and things being cross pollinated from other cultivar species like okay. apple trees other crab apples yeah, yeah. Um, and it's covered in, you know, these beautiful layer of, of moss and polypody ferns and some lichens. And you've got this beautiful trunk that's broken off here that's providing deadwood for a whole array of different invertebrates and bird species. Yeah. And it's a really important component of these forests is the deadwood element, you know, a huge amount of the particularly invertebrate di diversity in these environments comes from these features which are often associated with a sort of veteran status so yeah, the more yeah. dead wood characteristics or decaying wood characteristics a tree has got the more it is in a sort of veteran status you know falling apart you know branches coming off here and there yeah. so you've got that with this crab apple you've got a really nice ash tree just beyond that which probably is is has got ash diebacks falling down and dying from that disease but in its death it's still providing really important niches for a whole array of different species you've got a lot of decaying wood again got a lot of moss there um, and it might well because it's dying it might have um, potential for providing cavities for great spotted woodpeckers and things to nest in they okay. might well sort of right. find it easier to drill holes into that and then a bit more on the sort of field layer or the sort of forest floor on this particular area where we are it's quite open you've got really nice mossy hummocks which are close association with rainforest environment you've got yeah. a bit of bilberry scattering of bracken which is a classic understory species in forest but the really nice contrast we have here is really open understory here and then dense bracken and bramble just beyond it uh -huh. and that's because this has been historically a grazed and browsed by wild horses wow. which have wow. come down and, and that's a really important natural component of forests is having grazing and browsing animals yes. and on the other side it's not had any grazing or browsing for decades probably which is why it's, it's sort of choked up with bracken and bramble. But also not too much grazing. You don't want too much yeah. exactly because that is a classic you'll get no regeneration and then the forest will die eventually yeah, right yeah. so you need yeah. that balance and here the balance has been really good. On the other side, we'll maybe try and see if there's opportunity to introduce grazing again, just at low levels, to okay. just open up the understory, create more, like more areas for mossy hummocks to develop, for more vascular plants and flowering plants to yeah. come up. Great, that's really interesting. So, shall I talk through what I see as a woodland photographer? That'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. 
this was just something that initially caught my eye and that's how a lot of photographs start isn't it something catches your eye and you think oh that looks nice i wonder if i can make something work and i'm so glad that you mentioned the different species is because that's one thing that i initially drew me to this scene um, and it's the different species that are offering the different layers in the image along with the layering of light mm. so it's also nice to hear you talk about the deadfall and how that's an important part, part of the, the life cycle of a woodland but also photographers love decay it's just, I don't know why what it is uh, but there's something kind of dynamic about it where we've got this snapped branch on the crab apple here and also the deadfall it offers that kind of initial interest because the light's just gathering on that branch, which really stands out against the darkness of the mossy colored branches of the living branches of the crab apple. And as we move into the scene, into the mid ground, and we have that um, ash tree, just look at that pocket of light, that opening in the canopy and the way that light just comes down and illuminates that tree. We have immediately got that separation because, you know, it's a pretty standard day. There's nothing interesting conditions wise. If we've got mist or fog, that allows us to build up layering and lots of different woodland scenes. But because we don't have that, we've got to work a little bit harder. And this is why this time of year is so good, is because we get that wonderful play of light um, as it kind of works its way through pockets in the canopy. Uh, so we've got that layer of light there, and then we move further back, and we've got that repetition of light in a way, because it's a very warming light, the feel of it on the branches. Yeah. So we get it here, then in the middle, then in the background with the roaring tree. Um, but then contrasting with that is the darkness of the hazel. And what I've done is, well, a lot of it is about holding the corners, deciding definitely what has to be in the frame and definitely what has to be out. What's distracting? How can we frame the image to keep the emphasis where we want it? So we're using some of these really kind of interesting moody branches of the crab apple to help frame the top. We're framing the bottom with the deadfall. We've got some holly regeneration there. And then as we move into it, we've got the the kind of lushness of the bracken, which is gathering the light as well. Yep. But also we've got the dark green in the foreground, then a kind of lighter, warmer green, and then it goes cooler again in the background. And then right smack in the middle, which is intentional, but I don't think it will look intentional in the end image, is the hazel. And it just gives, it just helps to hold the attention towards the center. Even though our eye will also be drawn to the rowan tree on the far right hand side, it just gives us different elements. It's about variation as well. So we've got variation and layering in light, variation in the species of trees, which is all part and parcel of a kind of rich and diverse woodland as well, isn't it? We framed up a four by three. I think that works quite well. A square will also work. We're just nipping out the sky at the top, just so we can keep the emphasis and feeling of light towards the center of the frame. Hello. You want to be in? <laughs> Star of the show. <laughs> Come on, Meg. Don't, don't trample the uh, don't trample the thing that we want to talk about. <laughs> you just come in for. She likes to reverse in for a bum rub. Come on. Good girl. <laughs> like, why are you sat down here? What's, go what's going on? What's interesting? Are you going to stay there then? Okay, fine. I think we can pretty much we can make just out. about make it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, now, I've seen these ferns quite a lot yep. in my travels, but I've never noticed these, which are slightly different fronds, which are from the same fern. That's it. So, what on earth's going on here? Yes, <laughs> no, it's well observed. Yeah, it's really interesting. So, this is called the hard fern, 
mm. uh, or Bletchnam Spikant. Okay, <laughs> is I'm not going to remember. No. Yeah, the hard one is easy to remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah hard fern. That's yeah. all you need to know. And yeah, like you said, you know, the normal fronds are these quite thick, um, these thick sort of finger-like fronds that are coming up out of the base, mm. um, and they've got fairly thick pinules on them. These little finger projections coming off the main stem, um, but then these next to them the really fine little pinules coming off them and they're quite dark centered the stem is really dark mm. and it gives this much finer more erect appearance as well because it's growing quite tall yeah and basically so this element of the plant it's both the same plant this element is producing the spores which are going to be dispersed by the wind so it's growing a bit taller mm. and then um, and thinner to be able to get higher up and disperse those spores so these are That's the amazing. fertile fertile yeah. fronds and these are basically just cracking on with the sort of photosynthesis side of things. Okay. So they're not doing any, they're infertile, they don't produce any spores. And it's unique amongst the ferns in that, or at least the ones that I know anyway, where you have a different element of the same fern doing these different functions. Whereas this fern, for instance, right next to us, um, this will produce the spores on the underside yeah. of the same plant. Yeah. You know, whereas this has got these two different elements uh, it's, going on. It's, it's really fascinating. Cool. I've, never, I've never seen it, but in terms of... As, as an element to include in a photograph, it has a fantastic structural appearance. Yeah, um, fantastic. Yeah. Very good. Well, thanks, for, thanks for that insight. Not at all. Yeah, that's it. Please excuse it's slightly awkward. I know it's just, uh, <laughs> very awkward. Yeah. <laughs> but I always feel as if uh, if I've had to work hard for the image, it's somehow better. <laughs> That's it, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, so we're in a different location now, which you brought me to, which is wonderful. Much more drama here. Yeah. It's very, very steep sided gorge. We've got this beautiful river running through. Um, a very different feel though here in terms of the variety of trees. A yeah. lot of uh, carnivorous plantation as well. Yep. Yep. So what's, what's the story here? The story here, yeah, it's interesting. So we're still in the region that would have Atlantic temperate rainforest, but it's had a lot of modifications in the past. So you can see we've got plantations of larch, of Sitka spruce, Douglas fir scattered around the valley here. We've got rhododendron, which is an introduced non-native um, and yeah. it's invasive. It's classed as invasive because it spreads like wildfire and really has quite a damaging effect on these sort of environments because it shades out lots of other species, it prevents mm -hmm. other species from growing and it has a allelopathic effect as well, which means that there's toxins and things in the leaves and when they die down into the forest oh, litter, yeah. that pro prohibits other things from growing. Um, and it's incredibly that. hard to get rid of. Yeah. Most ways of getting rid of it, people use Roundup and glyphosate, which obviously is not great. So you don't want that in the ecosystem. So it's a real difficult compromise with this thing. So they've got a lot of this in the valley here, which we didn't have in the previous location that we were in. No. So, you know, you've got a few more issues to contend with in this forest that needs a bit more management interventions really to sort of, yeah. you know, restore it to something that's more, you know, intact. And yeah. Now I wouldn't typically snap branches to make an image, but this is pretty guilt free. Yeah. Uh, snapping these rhododendron branches, we're kind of doing a bit of uh, worthwhile gardening sure. in the process. Um, but the thing that caught both our eyes here was these beautiful moss covered are they kind of is it dead fall branches or is there a bit of roots I, I, in there as I well think there's a bit of a mix mainly branches that have fallen down actually okay, right yeah, yeah. yeah not so much the roots itself as the branches yeah yeah but that's softened with a beautiful mix of ferns and ivy yeah and it stands out because it's it's a bit warmer you know the greens are a bit warmer in there compared to the surrounding foliage sure but it's just got a wonderful kind of gorge rainforest feel to it in that it's dense it's rich there's lots going on in terms of texture and different greens um, but the way that we've got this fallen tree we've got an alder in the foreground here um, and different different mix of species that are creating this kind of frame of vegetation and a window through to the cascades in the background 
So that's what I've tried to achieve here. I could probably do with being even further up here, but it's getting more and more uh, awkward. Um, but I've filled the edges of the frame with that rich foliage. I mean, we don't need mist, we don't need fog. Yeah, it would be lovely would be to, nice. for it to be raining yeah. in the rainforest yeah. <laughs> uh, because all that would glisten on the leaves, uh, give it some structure and interest and really kind of bring it to life a bit more. But as it is, it still looks fantastic. I love that window through. It's just like windows through to things. It just encourages you to look a little bit deeper, uh, you know, sparks the imagination a little bit more. There's still careful positioning to make sure that we've got you know, the little bits of cascades in just the right place. Uh, but the colour separation with the warmth in the moss against the cooler greens of the leaves, we can try and tease it out a little bit more in the final image. We've got a, a 90 mil lens on, uh, a prime is just enough reach. Um, so yeah, I think it works. Probably a vertical five by uh, four yep. or four by three. Either of those should, should work okay. But yeah, it's because it has been challenging. I did spot some things which I'd love to come back to at a different time of year and we're fighting with the lights again, but that's 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 a worthwhile image, I think, so we'll see, see how that turns out. Superb. Good Fantastic. stuff. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed episode two from my recent trip and listening to Ben's insightful commentary. There's two more episodes to come in which we finally get some rain. We stumble upon some pretty awesome trees and talk through some really nice photographs. So if you've not seen episode one yet, I'll pop a link in the description below so you can catch up on that. Now, last week I teased that my very first calendar is coming, which is very exciting. I'm not entirely sure when it will be available to order yet, but as soon as it is, you'll be able to do so via the Trees for Life website. It includes some of my classic images from Scotland. The printing has excellent green credentials and by buying a copy, you're helping to support the fantastic rewilding work by Trees for Life. So please keep an eye out for announcements on here, Instagram, Facebook, and my newsletter. In the meantime, please check out my website for books and prints. But for now, that's it. I best start editing episode three, but thank you very much for watching this one and I'll see you again very soon. <laughs>